This is an ultrasound examination of the jugular vein, subclavian vein, and inominid vein on both the right and left sides. This patient has a pick line in their right arm. This first dual image demonstrates compressed and non-compressed views in the area of the jugular vein. This is a transverse image. Thrombosis can be demonstrated in the jugular vein and the pick line is also located in the jugular vein. Upon compression, the thrombus does not compress and of course either does the pick line. Pick line is obviously in the wrong place. This is a longitudinal image showing some of the thrombosis in the jugular vein. It has mild echogenicity and it has some irregularity to its surface. Another image, this with colored Doppler demonstrating thrombosis with irregular surface to it. This is all thrombus as well done in this more central portion of the jugular vein. Another image demonstrating the irregular surface of the thrombus. One more demonstrating the same. This is a pulse Doppler tracing of the internal jugular vein and uh, this uh, particular tracing is done at a rather fast sweep speed. There are only three cardiac cycles on this entire trace. A small atrial kick can be demonstrated in the jugular vein which eliminates total occlusion. There is flow uh, however, this is not the irregular spiky pattern that we expect to see with an internal jugular vein. Here's another image of uh, the jugular vein demonstrating the presence of the pick line within it. Another transverse image of the thrombus within the jugular vein on the right side. This is a colored Doppler image of the anominid vein. This portion of the image is uh, almost impossible to interpret, but up here at the location of the beginning of the jugular vein, we can see hypoechoic thrombus. This is the Doppler waveform of the anominid vein. This is a typical pattern for a normal anominid. There are strong atrial kicks, a reverse flow during atrial uh, contraction and we see two prominent forward flow events. This is a image of the subclavian vein in long axis and we can see thrombus in this location. This thrombus is less echogenic than the thrombus seen in the jugular vein. It has a very smooth surface although the possibility that this is a valve cusp cannot be ruled out on this particular image. The Doppler waveform for the subclavian vein is highly abnormal. There's minimal flow, minimal atrial kick. Again, it's a high sweep speed, so this uh, tends to stretch out the pattern somewhat. This is a look at the left side, and we can see a normal jugular vein which compresses fully on the image on the right. Color Doppler demonstrates a lack of filling in this area. However, this is due to update timing. The sonographer switched to pulse Doppler at a time where there was diminished flow uh, due to normal pulsatility in the internal jugular vein. The spiky pattern of the jugular vein can be demonstrated on this image. This is a grayscale image of the anominate vein. This echogenicity is likely due to high gain settings. The color Doppler appears to fill the anominate vein and there is a normal appearing anominate signal uh, 
in this area despite the lack of color flow. Again, this is a timing issue and not related to thrombosis. Two steps forward, one step back. In this case, we only see one step. Remember that superimposed upon the cardiac cycle is a respiratory phasicity in these central veins. This is a long axis image of the left subclavian vein. There's some echogenic material in it. However, this is likely due to high gain settings. This is a image demonstrating the uh, flow pattern in the subclavian vein. Uh, this appears to be normal. We have two steps forward, one step back uh, with a, uh, a easily demonstrated atrial kick. The color Doppler up here does not demonstrate filling of this vessel. This may be a timing issue or perhaps there is some thrombosis. Further images would be needed to clarify this situation. This is a grayscale image of the subclavian vein and uh, again some echogenic material in here which may or may not be related to a, a rather high grayscale gain setting. So this patient has definite thrombosis in the right jugular vein, this irregular surface and echogenicity uh, makes it likely to be subacute. There is also some thrombosis in the right subclavian vein. This is less echogenic and this thrombosis has a smooth surface which may or may not represent the surface of a valve cusp. A particular interest is the location of the pick line in the right internal jugular vein. This is in the wrong place. 